Hello and greetings from Eastern Europe, my name is Cold Beer, and this is my list of the very best games like Classic Fallout. I asked my subscribers, do they want this list to become a reality? And around 500 responded, with majority being very positive about my idea. So I did a research and I have made a list where you will not find almost any fantasy games. I say almost because there is one partially fantasy based, so I decided to make a list consisting of only sci-fi anti-utopian and of course of post-apocalyptic games played from top-down or isometric perspective where the exploration of the world is available. Let's start with Underrail. This is an old-school turn-based isometric indie role-playing game that focuses on exploration and combat. The game is set in a distant future, where the life on the Earth's surface has long gone and the remnants of humanity now dwell in Underrail, a vast system of metro station states that it seems are the last bastions of a fading race. Where have I heard that? Oh yeah, Metro games. Here you take control of one of the denizens of such station state, whose life is about to become all much more interesting and dangerous, as you are caught in the middle of conflicting factions of the Underrail as they violently struggle to survive in the harsh underground environment. And I am constantly thinking, how do they manage to breathe underground for so long time? Do they have working air conditioners or something? And if so, isn't the air upstairs poisonous? All in all, it is apocalypse, isn't it? How long can a human being survive underground without air? Well, obviously air is overrated. Only thing you need to survive a long time under anywhere is a lot of vodka. Game will take about 60 hours of your time, so it's a decent storyteller. But I should warn you, this is no joke. Game is hard and you will struggle a lot in certain situations, not knowing what to do next, fighting some super hard enemies or stuck in one place without any clues. Atom RPG or as I call it, Soviet Fallout Union, because it is basically a Fallout game. Just here, instead of a wanderer, you will be called Komradalo. In 1986, Soviet Union and the Western Bloc were destroyed in mutual nuclear bombings, and you are one of the survivors of nuclear holocaust. Your mission is to explore the wild and wondrous world of the Soviet wasteland, to earn your place under the sun, to gain many levels, kill raid Radioactive wasps, spiders, and warriors mutants. We are the children of the atom. Radiation gave birth to mutants. Yeah, radiation always do that, doesn't it? Anyway, here you will stream for the better communists tomorrow, and along with that, you will have to investigate a shadowy conspiracy aimed at destroying all that is left of life on Earth. Also recently, the second part, named Trutograd, was released in early access. Check on it immediately after you finish this one. Game is really good. Mutant Year Zero – Road to Eden this is a tactical game that combines the turn-based combat of XCOM with real-time stealth and exploration of post-human world reclaimed by nature and mutants. Yep, mutants again. But not the ordinary kind. It seems that here you will control a Donald Duck and his friend Bebop from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. To survive, companions must venture out of the city to explore the zone, where one day they might find the Eden of Legends, the ancient haven in the middle of hell, I guess with mountains of potato salad and rivers of vodka. Maybe you will find your answers there. Then again, maybe it's all bullshit. Game has really beautiful graphics, great humor and interesting story. Also very positive reviews on Steam. The Fall – Last Days of Gaia this one has an interesting backstory. During the making of the game, developers contracted the game designers Damien Folletto and Jeff Husgis, ex-Black Isle Studios developers who worked before on Van Buren, the intended and never finished Fallout 3. In the year 2004, The Fall was released in Germany and some other European countries, but not in English-speaking countries. In the year 2006, game was re-released with many bugs fixed, additional quests and rewards 
rework textures. Also English version was promised, but again it was never released. That is sad old news to hear. But I was thinking that the English version should be somewhere. And I found it, a very good fan translation of the whole game. I will put a link in the description below. Encased a sci-fi post-apocalyptic role-playing game, a tribute of roadside picnic and to Fallout games. If you don't know or forgot what is a roadside picnic, I can remind you that it is a book written by brothers Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, famous Soviet science fiction writers. An example, one legendary Ukrainian video game was made with a world based on this book. Stalker, huh? Yes, exactly, I am talking about Stalker, so you can imagine what it is all about. Here you are a participant in project researching the technology and artifacts of long gone civilization. Be prepared for dangerous anomalies and cool artifacts. See exactly like in Stalker. Game is quite short, campaign will last about 30 hours, but encased has replay potential, because world will change along with the actions you do and the decisions you make. Planet Alcatraz. Here you will travel through the game world and fight against enemies in the real-time mode. In a general sense, Planet Alcatraz can be portrayed as a non-linear adventure with lots of shooting. Several genres are mixed in this game, but despite that fact, it isn't stuck between them and appears to be classical RPG that is based on a specially developed system. In the year 2008, Planet Alcatraz 2 was released, and although it has positive reviews on Steam, there is no English version of Available. Game is only in Russian. The English version should be somewhere. Nope, not this time. Although fan translation is in progress, but it started only in 2019. So when I found it, I couldn't believe my eyes. If you want to follow the translation progress, or maybe you are fluent in both Russian and English and want to become a team member of translators, you will find a link in the description below. Crater. I can probably guess that you have never heard about this one, but I have found it interesting enough to put it in my list. So this is a post-apocalyptic Sweden. Yeah, I agree that this is really an expected setting. Despite that here you can control a party of characters, game is real time. So here instead of carefully planning your battles, your sabers will hack and slash the human flesh. Yeah. Just like that. I usually have no problem with hacking and slashing, except the fact that this game is ridiculously unbalanced. Some enemies die when you just look at them, and some wipe your party without even breaking a sweat. And you can't do anything about that, because it happens in an instance. You can't carefully plan anything, it's not turn-based. Anyway, you can still get to and kill the main boss, it isn't impossible. Well, to be fair, I would never pay 15 euros for the game. But if you manage to find it on a sale, give it a try, why not? Stellar Tactics Look at this wonderful game full of vast space battles where you can... Oh, I can already hear you saying... What the hell is that? Yeah, it looks like a space strategy game. Why is it here? Well, because it's not what it seems. This is a sci-fi role-playing game featuring turn-based ground combat, space exploration, deep character customization and a massive living universe with over 160,000 star systems. Equip your ships with the best stuff you can find, gather a powerful crew of mercenaries and set out into the void. Explore the vast cosmos and embark on a dangerous missions with your crew, fight in a turn-based battles, explore alien relics, gather rare artifacts and enjoy nice humor. Game has very positive reviews on Steam, so it is a really cool contender to claim all your upcoming free time. Shadowrun Franchise the year is 2054. Magic has returned to the world, awakening powerful creatures of myth and legend. Technology merges with the flesh and consciousness. Elves, trolls, orcs and dwarfs walk among us, while ruthless corporations bleed the world dry. You are a shadow runner, a mercenary living on the fringes of society, surviving in the shadows day by day, on skill and instinct alone. When the powerful 
all the desperate need a job done, you get it done by any means necessary. Although Shadowrun World was used in 8 games, you need to know only about 3 of them. Shadowrun Returns, Dragonfall and Hong Kong. In all of those you will find a variety of character skills and traits large enough for replaying through the story from different perspective. Dead State this is a survival RPG set in a central Texas at the collapse of civilization and the dawn of the undead apocalypse. As society is beginning to fall apart, you must organize a group of survivors together, fortify a shelter, scout for food and supplies, negotiate with or defend against other factions and maintain order inside the shelter as humanity teeters on the brink of the extinction. Although zombie apocalypse is not the most original plot you can imagine, right? Why there is no game where everyone is a zombie from the very beginning and then one of those zombies becomes sick and turns into a human. And then he will try to make as more humans as possible and zombies will be in panic because human turns zombie into a human not by biting but by fucking them. I can feel that this story would be way better than just a casual zombie apocalypse. Anyway, Dead State itself is a very well made. It will easily immerse you into a post-apocalyptic brain-eating reality. Wasteland 2 game is made by the producer of the original Fallout. The Wasteland's hellish landscape is waiting for you to make your mark or die trying. With over 80 hours of gameplay, you will deck out your Desert Ranger squad with the most devastating weaponry, test the limits of your strategy skills and bring justice to the Wasteland. Game isn't trying to put you in a strict frame, meaning that if you can't find a key to a particular door, you can pick the lock, bash it with your boot or just blow it open. And also, all the choices you make here matters, everything you do is changing game's events and forever alters the lives of those in the wasteland. Third part of the game is upcoming, but dude, just start with this one, the third one isn't gonna run away. And also keep an eye on my next video where I will tell you everything about upcoming games like classic Fallout, including Wasteland 3. But hey, how about the first wasteland game you may ask? Why well, I'm not talking about first one, is it bad or something? No, but dude, just look at it. See, there is a huge chance that this game is just not for you. Main list is over, but I have a few honorable mentions. Although I kept almost all list fantasy games free, I just have to mention Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic. It is literally a Fallout 2 with steampunk, magic and other fantasy stuff. Great game, check it out. Disco Elysium. It is more like a book than a game, but if you like when your actions really matter, or if you want that dialogue choices actually meant something and your answers would make difference for the upcoming choices you are getting, it is probably the best game there is. I am serious. Disco Elysium is incredible with the freedom it gives you. World is also not the past or nowadays, but an alternative where the city tries to recover from the war that happened decades prior the story of the game. It gives the game a weird, unexpected charm. And of course I have to mention two huge Fallout 2 mods. Fallout Nevada and Fallout 1.5 Resurrection. These are both story mods, basically brand new campaigns for Fallout 2. So it's basically Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 with an engine of Fallout 2. If you never tried them, it is a shame, please fix that. You can find links to the mods in the description below. Thank you for watching. This is the time when you can consider subscribing for more videos like that, press like and if you are enjoying my videos for a longer period of time, please consider becoming my patron on Patreon. Join those amazing people who are helping me create all those cool videos. Even $1 a month is a huge help, please consider that. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time, bye.